Hey everybody, it's JP from BigSexyBeast.com here and I thought in this video I'd take a little bit of time to go over um, some expedition planning that I've been doing and take you through kind of my gear loadout, um, kind of my plan for working remotely, uh, what I'm packing, and then maybe a little bit about where I'm going. Uh, so for the last probably seven, eight years, um, every summer I've taken the, the whole notion of working remotely to uh, the extreme. And typically I go somewhere that's pretty far off grid. Um, a lot of times it's out west, Colorado, Wyoming, Montana, Idaho, uh, Utah. Um, one year I did a big loop up through uh, Nova, New Brunswick, Nova Scotia, Newfoundland, Labrador, so all around kind of maritime and far northern Canada did the Trans-Labrador Highway. Uh, Sarah flew up and, uh, and joined me for a good portion of the back half of that, uh, that Canada trip. So a lot of times uh, Sarah or the boys will fly in and meet me somewhere, do part of the trip with me, and then the rest of the time it's mostly just Scout and I, or we will connect up with some buddies that are going to be in the area. Steve, uh, Steve joined me last year for um, pretty much the whole trip, um, and you know, for the most part, it's uh, it's mobile officing from wherever you're at. And so, uh, there's a few things you have to do to kind of be able to do that. Um, I uh, my my primary job is in artificial intelligence. Uh, so a lot of what I do is video conferences and online meetings, which is pretty commonplace these days now with coronavirus, but uh, uh, I kind of take it to the extreme and have been doing it for a long time, so I thought I'd take you through some of that. Also take you through just some of the gear loadout, a little deeper um, exploration of uh, what's in the drawers and what do I pack. Um, the truck walk around video has been really popular. And so this is kind of that same concept, but down to a much lower level of detail. I'll probably break it up into sections and, um, and create some, uh, a table of contents, if you will, so you can skip ahead to different sections. Probably be a longer video because there's a lot to go through. Um, and then maybe I'll chunk it into four or five uh, little videos uh, later on. But uh, I'll start taking you through piece by piece and um, in no particular order. And, uh, and then I'll go back and catalog it all. So, hope you enjoy. Hope it's uh, educational. As always, if you've got uh, questions about how something works or what I did or what I bought, please drop it in the comments below and I'll try to address each of those and place links and everything that you're interested in. Um, so, thanks and come along for the ride. So one pretty new addition to the Tundra that I'm actually quite uh, quite excited about is this tire table uh, because it's it's uh, pretty functional and it packs completely flat. You set it up and take it down in like 30 seconds to a minute, and uh, it's just kind of a no fuss table. So I can use it as a workspace. I can use it for dinner. I can uh, sit here. And uh, a couple people can sit here side by side and have cocktails. Um, and so uh, I think it's going to be a really nice um, addition. I don't have a long-term review on it yet because I've just added it to the, uh, to the kit, if you will. But this, it's called the Tailgater Tire Table. And you can set it up with this leg or without the leg. I set it up with the leg because it's uh, much more stable that way. And it is very stable. Uh, you couldn't stand on it, but uh, but it's pretty stable otherwise. So, obviously, laptop uh, uh, for working remotely uh, for my main job, and then also for editing videos and things like that is key. Um, I typically create a Wi-Fi hotspot in the truck. Um, I've got a cell phone signal booster, which I'll show you in a little bit, um, that boosts the signal wherever I'm at. So a lot of times I can go to a place that maybe has one or two bars of cell service. I can boost that to, uh, to full five bars. Um, I can go to a spot that has no cell service at all, and I can boost it enough to do a video conference. Um, and so that's, uh, uh, that's pretty awesome. There were a few places in Wyoming last year that I was not able to boost a signal, um, and maybe one spot in Montana. Uh, so I am considering adding a satellite phone 
uh, to the mix this year. So when I'm in one of those areas where you just literally can't boost um, a signal, you'd still be able to do a conference call, have some connectivity, things like that. Um, you know, maps, I'll cover maps maybe in a different video, but uh, I'm doing a lot of research right now on different areas that I may go. One area that we went last year that I liked quite a bit, I had not been before, was the uh, Absaroka, uh, Abaroska, Absaroka. Absaroka and Beartooth Wilderness. Um, it's uh, outside of uh, Red Lodge, Montana, uh, between there and the north gate of Yellowstone. <coughs> Very remote. Looks like Switzerland. Um, one of the probably most undiscovered spots in the lower 48, and so I definitely want to go back there. Uh, there's a Jeep trail there called the Morrison Jeep Trail, um, which climbs, I think, like 6,000 vertical feet in a very short period of time, up 27 switchbacks. Um, I'm kind of thinking about doing that trail. Um, it's uh, The tundra's a little long uh, for that trail um, on navigating some of the switchbacks, but it, uh, it's definitely in my consideration set. <clears throat> There's a nice uh, river for some fly fishing right before you start the trail, so it, at worst case, I would, uh, I would end up doing that. Um, so uh, the table's turned out pretty cool so far. Again, I'll do a long-term review, um, and it's kind of my workspace and kind of the home of the mobile office. Got a new awning coming, um, and uh, on the teardrop videos, maybe you've seen the A or B awning. I used to have the awning room that I lost uh, somewhere coming back from a trip. Uh, but for the Tundra, I ordered a Slumberjack Roadhouse tarp, uh, which makes an awning, and you can do it off of any side of the vehicle. So you can do it off this side over my office. I can do it off the back in the kitchen area. And um, I'll do uh, I'll put it in one of the videos along the way, but I'm pretty excited about it because I think it's going to be more flexible uh, to be able to move it around to different areas around the truck, set up in the shade when I need shade or when I need protection from the rain when I'm working, or when you're cooking and in and out of the back of the truck, you can set it up back there as well. Uh, so that's pretty cool. So the table, uh, again, pretty excited about. I'm thinking about a new chair of some sort. These are the REI chairs. Several people have commented in the videos that you like these chairs and they're super comfortable. Sarah got them at REI. They're bigger and wider. Um, they do take 60 seconds, two minutes to take up and put down. And so one thing is when you're closing up camp for the night and you think it might rain, um, you know, ideally you put your chair in out of the rain. A lot of times I don't. I just fold this one over, lay it flat so the wind doesn't blow it away and put it up against the side of the truck. You can wake up the next morning, you've got a bit of a wet chair. So I'm thinking about one that'll fold um, and deploy uh, faster. They take up more space. Uh, but at night when I'm getting ready to go to bed and I think it's going to rain or snow or be really windy, I just fold it up and put it in the cab. So I'm still thinking about chair and, and what we do there. So let's move around back. So a lot of these trips that I've been doing, the short videos on, and then the videos that are dropping now, which are the Cape Lookout National Seashore, a lot of those were um, kind of shakedown cruises or dry runs for you know the longer, longer expeditions over the summer. To kind of put the gear through its paces, decide what, uh, what I like, what's working well, what's not working well, um, what, uh, what I think still needs to be improved, what's got to be just completely switched out. And I, I keep a notebook, um, and so I'll make notes around uh, after a trip what the reflections were. Hey, this worked great, no problems with power, solar panel generated plenty of um, uh, electricity, or trasheroo doesn't work with the Tundra because there's no spare tire to hang it on, so i got to figure out a trash situation. And so those are kind of the, the bullet item reflections that I do on each one of these trips. While it's fresh in my mind, that way I can come back and kind of um, address it for the next trip. So the trash situation on the um, Na Cape Lookout National Seashore trip, we had uh, taken the trash aroo off the back of the FJ, and kind of my thought was, is we'll use it around camp on the ground, and then when we're ready to go, we'll put it up in the uh, the new roof basket up there, and that's what we did, and it worked. Um, but it's a bit of a pain uh, to do it, so I'm going to try something different here. Um, I had been thinking about getting a canvas bucket uh, for a while uh, for a few different reasons. It's nice just to have a bucket um, around camp. 
um, but like a, uh, the big orange Home Depot buckets, uh, they take up a lot of room uh, when they're not in use. And so I wanted, uh, I was thinking about this canvas bucket because when you're not using them, they pack pretty flat. And then I got to thinking, I was like, well, you know, that would hold a trash bag and you wouldn't mess up your canvas bucket and you could just deploy that out. And so I'm gonna try that, I'm gonna give that a try. And it's a kind of a dual purpose item. One is to have a bucket, uh, but the other is to have a uh, situation for trash that you know is not the trash room. Uh, so if you've seen several of the other videos uh, when I'm camping, you know that um, uh, kind of this is the main cockpit area, if you will, um, around camp. Um, it's the deck drawers, I've got this one pulled out now. This one is the one that I have the, uh, the tabletop on. Um, and this is a tabletop that I made where I used some MDF and I covered uh, the first 36 inches of it uh, with um, uh, some stainless steel. So let me reposition the camera around. I'll give you a bit of a close-up here. Um, I'll show you what I'm about to do differently to this and then we'll take a look at this drawer, what's underneath. Alright, so for others, I've had this question a couple times on a couple of forums that uh, have a Tundra and have the deck drawers or thinking about getting the deck drawers and you're interested in this table setup. So it's 19 inches. Um, I, I measured it twice again yesterday. Uh, 19 inches this way. And then this one goes back into the drawer um, a ways and kind of the original idea was uh, stainless steel up to, I think it's aluminum actually, up to about here. Uh, for kind of a cooking surface and then I'd have a surface back here that just be a general work surface and it covers pretty much the full length of the drawer, not quite um, when it's sitting in here, I'll show you um, there's when it's all the way forward this one will slide back about four or five inches and so you can access some items right here so I've been thinking for a while about ordering some HDPE high density polyethylene I think it's the same stuff that cutting boards are made out of and uh, so I did that, I did it yesterday, uh, but I ordered a different dimension. So it's still 19 this way. Um, it's only gonna be 36 this way though, so it's gonna be about this far, which means that I ought to be able to slide that one back probably to right here, which means that I can access the majority of my tools and stuff in this area without ever having to take this out. Because right now I find myself a lot taking the tabletop out and laying it on the bed when I wanna get to something here which is not a bad thing, it's just if I could slide it, it would make it a lot more handy and accessible. So uh, let me pause the camera, kind of get set up, and I'll tell you what's going on in here. All right, so this drawer is mostly um, tools, recovery gear, um, and things like that. Um, it's actually kind of the heavier of the two drawers. I probably should do a little bit to try to equalize those. I've got a pair of leather gloves in here. Um, you probably saw those in the ARB hand winch uh, video, um, but just nice leather work gloves. Um, also in here I have uh, some WD-40 and 3-in-1 oil. Um, I keep an MSR stove fuel bottle, um, and in this is, um, I believe it is either denatured alcohol or white gas, one of the two. I'll give it a smell here and see. Um, it could be you know, unleaded gasoline. Yeah, this is uh, this is denatured al or, uh, yeah, alcohol like you would burn in an alcohol stove. And the idea behind this is you never know when you're going to need an accelerant of some sort. Um, typically not to start a fire, but you never know. Um, but that's just a little bit of really combustible fu uh, fuel. Uh, this here is the Atlas 46 tool roll, uh, which is great because you can lay it open flat here. And you've got, you know, I've got my wrenches. I've got pliers and specialty tools and a sharpening stone. Um, I've got um, electrical crimpers. I've got some uh, cleanup brushes, um, uh, Allen keys, hex keys there, a socket ratchet, um, and uh, Teflon tape, and just a variety of miscellaneous stuff, some patches in there for jackets and things like that. This one here is a whole host of different types of screwdrivers, um, as well as a magnetic uh, pickup, uh, telescoping magnetic pickup, uh, to be able to you know, retrieve items that you drop, kind of down in a tight place. Tape measure off to the side there. And then this first one, I'm not gonna go into the whole thing here, but essentially I have a, a complement of 
SAE and metric uh, deep well half inch drive sockets. Um, and then I have uh, socket drive um, hex, uh, hex wrenches there as well. Uh, the chairs go right here. Uh, so the chair that's set up over there also goes right here when it's set up. And then I've got a spare chair uh, here. So that's the, uh, the where the chairs are going right now. Which is another reason I'm kind of reluctant to switch chairs is because you can see they take up very little space here. Underneath the tool roll. Uh, this is the winch cable for the ARB hand winch. Um, haven't used this in the field yet for recovery. I did use it in the garden the other day. I uh, kind of made a funny video there. If you haven't watched that, you can kind of watch the operation of the hand winch. Uh, but that's a 60 feet of winch cable and a hook. Uh, sets right there. Um, up front here, underneath uh, those shop tails, I've got uh, JB Weld and Extreme Heat JB Weld. In case you crack an oil pan or something like that. I've got a, uh, a thing of stakes, um, just to stake down the tarp, um, or whatever needs to be there. And then we'll work our way backwards here. Let's get this chair up and out of the way. Uh, blow gun attachment tool, you've seen, if you've seen my cleaning video, you know I use this to clean a lot inside the back and, and those types of things. Uh, here we have a Japanese nata. Uh, so this is a great tool uh, for little brush, uh, but I probably use it more than anything uh, for splitting kindling um, and processing down firewood. Um, there's a backpacking video out on the channel. Um, uh, bushcraft backpacking with kids uh, where the boys and I did a backpacking trip and you see me use this thing pretty extensively it's uh, it's very quickly become one of my uh, one of my favorite tools uh, it's definitely worth the uh, worth the investment um, all right let's work on so if you've seen my solar panel setup videos um, which are also out on the channel uh, you know, on top of the roof, I have a 200 watt fixed panel that's always there, always on. And if you're going to do a lot of van life, camper shell living, teardrop living, anything like that, I definitely recommend that you um, have a fixed solar panel. Um, it's just so much easier than thinking about deploying it when you roll up to camp um, or anything like that. That's the solar panel. It's by Powerfilm. It's 120 watts. It is a true 120 watts. Um, it works outstanding, and you just it literally unfolds. Um, I have a cable, a quick release cable that plugs in right here, and then it's basically like a tarp. Um, there's the panel itself um, that unfolds, and it's sort of like putting up a tarp around camp, except this one generates power, uh, which is pretty cool, and it is super, super efficient and powerful. Underneath here, another tool that uh, I've gotten recently um, that I really like and does not take up much space but uh, is exceptionally effective is this uh, 7 SVEN saw. Um, and so it makes a triangle bow saw uh, for processing firewood, clearing a road, anything like that. Um, again, doesn't take up much room, super lightweight, super strong. Also in the backpacking video, you'll see us use this to process firewood. <coughs> The newest addition is the ARB hand winch, um, and so you know this is just like a winch you would have on the front of your car, except this one is manually operated. It uh, feeds the 60-foot cable, and means you can do a 60-foot straight line pull. You can do a 30-foot uh, snatch block and the double line pull. This is the handle for that ARB winch, and so um, rather than put a fixed winch on the Tundra, I have this, and that way I can pull backwards, forwards, sideways. I can use it to recover trees out of the road, whatever I need to do there. This is the telescoping handle uh, for that hand winch that's uh, right there underneath it. Over here to this side um, is a canvas case for axe. And so in here I have axe and hatchet, uh, both. Um, so again, processing firewood, clearing a tree out of the road. If you watch the um, uh, trail running and camping in the snow teardrop video, uh, you'll see Wheeler and I care, clear a uh, tr pretty big tree from the road, and uh, and that's what we used to do it was uh, 
uh, or what I used is, uh, is that axle wheeler had, had an axle of his own as well. <coughs> further back here. Um, in the back we have an uh, ARB recovery bag. You'll also see that used in the hand winch in the garden video. Inside there we have a snatch strap, we have a tree protector, we have two bow shackles, we have um, a snatch block, I may have already said that. Um, and so that's basically just all the stuff you're going to use with your winch or with another vehicle to recover. And so that for the most part, oh last thing in here. Uh, this is a Glock e-tool, uh, which is effectively just a folding shovel. Uh, so if you needed to dig yourself out, um, working around the campfire or around camp or so. And again, nice, uh, um, nice and compact, uh, but pretty effective. Um, not quite as effective as having a full-size shovel with you, but uh, you can get a lot done with it. So let me repack this. We'll move over to the kitchen side and, uh, and go through it. All right, this drawer I am in and out of all the time uh, when I'm camping um, because primarily this is the kitchen drawer, and so that's probably one of the key reasons. So this is the, uh, the canvas bucket, uh, canvas bucket where it lives uh, that you saw hanging up for the trash. Set it off to the side. Um, I have a plastic. Uh, seat for the fajita pan. So if you've watched some of the other videos, um, instead of carrying a full cast iron skillet, I'm carrying a fajita pan um, that I cook in as a skillet because primarily I can eat off of it as well. So I will cook on this, then I'll set it on this plastic thing and, uh, and eat off of it. That means there's one dish to wash instead of multiple. Um, it also has a handle which slides on there, so you can use it to take it on and off the stove, um, and then you know, use that deed, and it keeps the heat off your legs. Um, so I really like this setup. Again, I'm all about efficiency. If you've watched uh, some of the other videos with me cooking and things, and I am cooking using um, a skillet and plate. I'm trying to do both at the same time. I do carry a single uh, plate, just one of the old enamel ones. This one is the more the stew bowl type, so it's the deeper of the two plates that they make. Uh, just because I find it's a little easier around camp to keep stuff on it. Um, moving, uh, moving on through here. This is the spare cap to the water port um, uh, water setup. If you've seen the regular truck walk around video, you know that I carry three and a half gallons of onboard water there that's pressurized. And I have the pressurizing cap. Um, in case something goes wrong with the pressurized cap, pressurizing cap though, I carry a spare manual cap just, just in case. Um, I carry a small pot uh, for boiling water. Um, the pot and the stove are about to get switched out um, next week. Uh, I've got a new Jetboil Genesis camp cook system uh, coming um, because it takes up about half the room of the, uh, the green Coleman that I have in here or about half the room of my partner stove. Um, so that's going to be pretty cool. Uh, these vacuum jars, um, again, you've seen if you've seen some of my other camping videos, you've seen that I use these quite a bit. Uh, these things are great because they keep coffee warm, but you can also use them to cook in. Uh, you put some dehydrated food in there, put some boiling water, close it up, go for a drive, go for a hike. Four hours later, it's still hot and it's cooked. Um, so that's uh, that's pretty good. Uh, a um, spatula. Uh, for turning burgers or eggs or whatever the case may be, and then a steel wire brush and scraper for the cast iron. Um, a, I have a couple of these in here. Doc B's uh, Organic Castile Soap uh, for washing dishes, washing your hands, taking a bath, brushing teeth, whatever you need to do. This stuff is super versatile, um, super good for the, super friendly for the environment. Um, so you're not having to worry about soap uh, and detergents um, getting in our water system and, and those types of things. So that's uh, pretty awesome. Uh, pinto bean seasoning. So if you saw the, I don't think it's out yet, the second episode of the Cape Lookout National Seashore video, uh, we use the thermal pot uh, to make some beans and rice. And this is the seasoning that I was using for that. 
Um, I've got a couple of, uh, of the strikers. Um, interestingly, one of them has fuel and the other one doesn't have fuel, but the striker still works, and so it's perfect for lighting a stove. Uh, so those, and one is for a backup. Um, this little uh, utensil kit um, I got off Amazon. Um, it's knives, forks, spoons, a couple metal drinking straws, um, a brush for cleaning the drinking straws, and this nice little travel case, also chopsticks. Um, it's like seven bucks on Amazon. Um, it's worked really well. A sponge, I don't use it a lot because I try to avoid being in a spot where I really have to wash many dishes, um, but I have it just in case I need to. I have a uh, uh, a cast iron brush uh, for scrubbing down the cast iron after you use it. And then as far as spices in here, I have cinnamon, I have uh, garlic salt, I have uh, a little Wild West steak seasoning, which is sort of like the Montreal steak seasoning, except I think this one is an organic one. Another thing, a Doc B's soap. I have some black sea salt. No reason it's black, it's just what I picked up at the time uh, there. Um, I have a uh, peppercorn grinder uh, here. <laughs> Let's see, what else do I have in here? I normally don't take all these things out at once, and so it's uh, messing around on me. Uh, shot glass, um, small, but we never use the small one, and then the big. Um, this is what I've got over here in my hand. I was holding it separate. Is uh, Jungle Juice 100% uh, DEET insect repellent. Try not to ever use it, but sometimes you get to a spot where the mosquitoes are just so bad. Uh, but if I can avoid using it, I'll avoid using it. Uh, a little Stanley flask. Uh, typically, I keep like an Añejo tequila um, in this. And then I have these guys in here. Um, to be honest with you, I never use these. Unless they may end up getting uh, getting taken out. Uh, but they're just a little uh, like silicon... Uh, uh, spoons or stirs or, or such. Um, so kind of working on the way through here. Uh, gallon heavy duty uh, freezer bags uh, with the zip top. Uh, my trash bags to go inside the canvas bucket. The vacuum food jar. Uh, several of the videos you see me cook breakfast or dinner in these things. Again, same kind of concept. You put your food in there, you put boiling hot water in there, you close it up take it with you hiking, whatever, four hours later, it's, uh, it's still cold. Um, a Yeti um, a koozie uh, to uh, uh, keep drinks cold, and then a little small cutting board, uh, which I may keep in here even after the new cutting board table um, gets here next week. Uh, working backwards, um, got a set of uh, kitchen knives from Best Made in here. And so we've got a smaller, more kind of a paring or fillet knife, kind of a mid-sized knife, probably gets used the most in cooking, uh, cutting up meat, things like that. And then it does have a, a really big one. These are really nice, good steel um, and uh, American hickory handles and a nice little uh, canvas case uh, to carry them in. So the stove that I've been using for uh, several of the videos here recently is um, uh, just an old Coleman two burner. Um, again, it's going to probably get retired here for this big trip, um, and I'm going to use that Genesis uh, camp cook system from Jetboil. Um, so we'll take a look at it. Once, it. once it comes in, I'll do a video once I've got some impressions. Cracking up because I just literally cleaned this entire drawer out and vacuum this thing top to bottom and it is full of uh, seashells and sand from the Cape Lookout uh, trip even after it's been completely cleaned out. I'm guessing those come out of the stove. I don't know where else they would have come from. Uh, so across the back here, big jet boil fuel canister, one pound canister for the Coleman stove. The jet boil uh, Genesis also uses these same canisters. And then my 17-year-old titanium jet boil backpack and stove that's also, also a French press. Um, if you've seen my other camping videos, you see I use this thing a lot with the dehydrated meals and with the vacuum cup. Um, and that's what I make my coffee in every morning. Um, this thing's outstanding. Boils water in less than three minutes, I believe. And so those just stay along the back. 
I won't pull it all the way out, but tucked in back up under there, that orange, if you can see that, that is a tire patch kit uh, from ARB. So it has all different size patches and patch tools uh, for flat repair. And then immediately behind that is my air compressor for airing the tires back up and down and those types of things. So that's, uh, that's this drawer's loadout. Uh, the compressor's pretty heavy, um, so it's not significantly lighter than this side, but it is a little bit lighter than this side. So let me repack this, we'll move in, uh, move in here. All right, before I completely shut this up, I noticed one thing in here that I forgot to mention, which is worth mentioning, is I have an MSR Sweetwater uh, water filtration. Uh, so if my only water source is a sketchy water source, I can pump and filter water. Uh, so it's important to mention that it is does stay in here very seldom uh, ever gets used. All right, kind of moving into the living and sleeping quarters. So I did a long video on this, so I, I know I'll do it kind of quickly. Um, the mattress here is a Lucid uh, Z-Fold mattress. I took the top section off of it. Um, it is wrapped in a waxed canvas tarp uh, to waterproof it, make it easy to clean. It is simply setting in there. There's a bungee cord that holds the wax canvas tarp tight on top of the mattress. And then up front, there's two points where it actually clips into the bed rails so that it won't slide out. Um, it keeps it in place. Um, I switched from a down sleeping bag to a canvas sleeping bag um, for most of my trips um, and uh, because of durability and I just didn't want to be beating up my nice down bags with Scott getting in and out. Scout has a, uh, has a new sleeping bag uh, which I'm excited to, uh, to try out with him. I have had him in it once um, and so it unzips pretty far. He can get inside of it and I can zip him up. It has to be really, really cold for Scout to want to get into a sleeping bag because uh, he stays really warm anyway. Uh, uh, so this is a three and a half gallon uh, water port um, that pressurizes off the hose when you fill it. And uh, so you have really kind of almost running, you do have running water uh, without any electricity and without any power. Um, and I've had that thing long enough now that I really like it. Um, and I can say that I really like it. it uh, I haven't had any issues, no leaks, any flaws. There were some questions on one of the videos uh, last week about have I had any leaks with it, and so far, no. Um, in front of that is a little Alpicool refrigerator. Um, it would seem like it's really small, but since you don't have to have any ice, um, you can fit a lot in it. I did that entire Cape Lookout National Seashore trip with just that standpoint and it was plenty. Um, I had several steaks in there, had chicken, chorizo, eggs, cheese, and there was still room for a six pack. And it's super power efficient. Um, doesn't use much uh, much amperage at all. All right, moving over here um, because we uh, we're told that there probably was not fresh water on Cape Lookout National Seashore because the pump had burnt out uh, because there's one freshwater well on the island. Um, we didn't feel like three and a, or I didn't feel like three and a half gallons was going to be enough water. And so last year on the big summer expedition, I got this Yeti six gallon silo water cooler uh, for the back of the FJ. And I decided that I was going to put it in the tundra to give me an extra six gallons. Had nine and a half gallons of fresh water in total with me. And after the Cape Lookout trip, I've decided that this is going to stay in here for the summer expedition as well. Um, because it's just nice uh, because you can not just addition put water in here, but you can throw a couple bags of ice in when you put water in your water. You have cold water for cold, cold water uh, for the whole week. Um, the top opens, you fill the top, and then um, down below, you've got a spigot. <clears throat> it's a high flow spigot uh, that uh, will fill, you know, an allergen bottle or something in just a few seconds. Uh, so it's a really high flow. And so I also got gravity fed, you know, running water over here on this side. 
I got these uh, from WeatherTech, uh, these door protectors uh, for Mr. Scout because he likes to look out the window and slobber. Uh, so I've got one on both sides. I'll show you his side in just a minute. Yeah, just put those on. So far, um, I like them. If you've seen my other videos, you know that practically in every door I have a fire extinguisher. Um, I've got some grocery bags here that I can use as trash sacks um, or if I need to clean up after Mr. Scout. And then this here is my dry food uh, box. Um, so if I pull this out, see, I've got uh, beans. I've got another one with rice in there. I've got some spices and peppers and a measuring cup in there as well. And then there is another box that's stuck down in that crate that has backpacking meals, salmon. And so this is going to be all my dry food storage is over here on this side. Anything that doesn't have to be refrigerated essentially goes in here. Um, I also threw in the bottom here, I threw in the bottom here this titanium uh, Vargo hexagon wood stove. <laughs> you can cook on this, mostly kind of as a novelty. Um, and I, I occasionally uh, might do an overnight um, or a backpack trip over one of the weekends uh, during the summer. And I'm away from the vehicle and so it gives me a way to cook when I'm out. And I think in the longer video I went through the uh, seat back panels and stuff so I won't go through those in a lot of detail in this video. So let me move around. Alright, this is Scout's side. He has a ton of room. He also has his door protector over here. Um, I uh, put, uh, I've got my wax canvas blanket, wool blanket right here. That's the blanket that I use instead of a sleeping bag on the Cape Lookout trip um, to cover up with. Uh, but I, I store it right there because it levels this area out. I've got a wax canvas tarp uh, that I put down here that goes pretty well three quarters of the way across, uh, two thirds of the way across, um, so that it's really easy to clean up after Scout. The table off of the tire that you saw at the beginning of the video uh, goes um, down flat first and then Scout's portable bed goes over the top of that so that uh, he's got you know a nice flat uh, bed to lay on there and it makes you know setting up and taking down that table uh, super fast so let me take you up top uh, on a couple new things that I've added um, one for the Cape Lookout trip and then the other one I added uh, this weekend so I had recently added uh, a set of Thule crossbars to the top of the Tundra. Even the reason I went that route is it's a way to get a roof rack on top of the Tundra without having to drill holes. Um, the Tacomas uh, come pre-drilled. Uh, the Forerunners come pre-drilled uh, for putting a roof rack on, but with the Tundras you have to drill a hole um, and use these nut zerts, I think they're called. I did not want to do that, drill holes in my uh, factory roof. And so I put uh, Thule Aero crossbars on there, and I already had a Thule cargo basket. And um, when I got ready to pack for the Cape Lookout trip, I'm like, hey, you know what? I'm going to throw that basket up there, and uh, it's going to stay up there. Uh, so let me show you what's, uh, what's up there in it, and what else is going to go, and then the other thing that I added this weekend. All right, in the Thule basket over on the driver's side, I have two four and a half gallon roto packs, uh, so that gives me nine gallons of uh, emergency fuel. Um, in the center there are my traction ladders. Those are the Smitty built uh, version um, of essentially the Max tracks. And in this open spot over here, I've got a Pelican case that's ultimately going to go in there for the summer expedition. And the new addition for that I put in this weekend is a WeBoost uh, OTR antenna. This is for my mobile phone booster. Um, it is a little over two feet tall above the basket, uh, which is pretty tall in the woods, and so it does fold flat forward into the basket uh, if I need the extra clearance. And so this is key to my mobile office setup because it allows me to roll into a spot like where I am right now, if you can see, and to be able to boost uh, five bars worth of signal, uh, which is key for running the laptop, Wi-Fi hotspots, video conferences, those types of things. And so that is the new antenna that's put on. Um, first impressions are that it is a lot better than the one that I have on the FJ um, because I am boosting a really strong signal. Alright, that's the, uh, the gear loadout at a uh, 
at a high level um, and at a reasonably low level. Gives you an idea of kind of most of the stuff that I'm planning um, for the summer expedition. Uh, there are obviously a lot of miscellaneous things that I didn't cover in the video, like headlamps, extra flashlights, uh, those types of things. Um, but I figured the video is going to be long enough as it is. Uh, one thing, just kind of talking about expedition planning in general. One thing that I had started several years ago, and I actually have it in Evernote on the on the iPad and I end up recreating it and kind of checking it against the one I have on the iPad, is I create a checklist. Um, and it, it sounds maybe a little bit uh, a little bit too much, but um, it's worked for me really well, so I, I definitely recommend it. And I create a checklist. So for example, I've got repair recovery, compressor, tire patches, tool roll, max tracks, ARB recovery bags, shovel, JB Will, WD-40, 3-in-1 oil, axe, hatchet, nata. You saw a lot of those items, actually saw all of those items in uh, the videos as we were going through the drawers. And then for camp, two chairs, sleeping bag, wax canvas blanket, awning. You saw or heard me talk about all of those items. Cook, cutting board, pot, fajita skillet, vacuum jar, uh, cutlery, knives, water filter, plate. Um, again, you saw all of those. And the reason that I do these checklists is um, I've got in my mind, you know, you need water, you need shelter, you need food, you need uh, light, uh, you need fire starting. And so I've got each of these kind of in these categories and these checklists kind of help me make sure that I have uh, uh, the inventory that I need when I take off. And uh, so far, it's been pretty successful at, uh, at not letting me forget things. First aid kit, I didn't show it to you, but I have a very exhaustive first aid kit um, right in front of Scout's area uh, that stays in the truck. Electronics, GoPro, GoPro charger, drone, iPad, laptop, external hard drive, you know, all things for work and for making videos, those types of things. Uh, the other thing is, I talked about it in the video a little bit, but um, uh, after, you know, a couple of days worth of camping, coming back and making a list of uh, so this is from the Cape Lookout trip learning what worked well canvas bed cover cleaned up easily uh, while out um, Even with beach sand maybe order a different size tarp, but it worked really well on the whole single battery for the truck um, So if you've watched my other videos, I've got a longer video on the solar setup and the battery setup for the truck I've had some comments and questions here lately that have asked for an even more detailed uh, video on the solar setup So I'll try to get to that um, but single battery, no power issues, even with the fridge running in hotter weather, generate more power than I consumed, um, I think, every day of the Cape Lookout trip. Solar panel, plenty of output, Alpicool, refrigerator, ran well, um, even on hot days, mattress, slept comfortably, uh, cargo net for clothes and things inside, works great. Yeti silo in cab for water, works great. Need a way to tie it down for off-road. So some of them are just adjustment things. Over here on what didn't work well, trash situation. Uh, trash was a pain to deal with, maybe a canvas bucket to hold bags. So you saw that in the video, I'm gonna try that now. Uh, front floor mats, uh, so I had the, T the Tundra TRD Pro uh, factory all weather mats in there. They're great, but they don't really have as much coverage as the WeatherTech floor liners that basically cover the entire floor area. Uh, so now I have the WeatherTech floor liners up front there. Um, step sliders, so on the, the first kind of destination on my trip out west is I'm stopping at Slee Off-Road and we're taking the Predator steps off, I may take them off before I go out and replace them with a true step slider from Slee Off-Road that gets my ground clearance back up and restored and they'll hold the weight of the vehicle if I get on anything crazy where I need to hold the weight of the vehicle um, and, and so on and so you know, checklists and making a journal of what works well and what doesn't work well um, is uh, something that works well for me. I'd love to hear your ideas and what you do when you're planning for trips um, to kind of make sure you remember everything and how you refine your gear list over time. But that's how I do it, um, is, uh, is through these checklists and through notes. So, a longer video. Hopefully it was interesting, helpful. Um, Love your comments down below because it helps me focus on what I need to produce next from a video perspective. And uh, this, I think, addresses some of the questions I've gotten in previous videos. I, I hear you loud and clear that you would like a more detailed setup video on the solar, and so I'll try to get to that as well. 
Um, as always, thank you for taking the time and watching. If you're not a subscriber to the channel, I would invite you to subscribe to the channel. If you like the video and the content, give us a thumbs up down below. Share it with your friends. Um, we've got patches and stickers available out on store.bigsexybeast.com. Um, and that really is just to kind of support us making, uh, making additional content. And they're kind of a fun patch um, if you haven't seen them uh, with, uh, with Sasquatch on them. Anyway, thanks, uh, thanks for the time and I uh, look forward to catching up with you soon.